everything that the musician wants to convey her artistry goes through this. It is the voice of the musician. This is the first bow. Whereas the second bow With the second bow, I can literally feel more hair in every inch of the bow. The touch is more intimate and it, it, it feels a little more glued to the string. Whereas <clears throat> the first bow, is, bow is, is, is a lot more flexible and a little bouncy, I think. So uh, it'll be perfect for playing uh, Paganini Caprice, I think. <laughs> Yeah, um, more, more, so, more. more. When I made the first bow for, for Inbo, um, he was preparing the Paganini competition, and um, I suffered playing, uh, seeing him at playing with the, with the previous bow because he was really limited. So I wanted to make a bow for him that was athletic very sportive, athletic and responsive immediately like this, you know, without sacrificing the quality of the sound. So it was a challenge because if you want a beautiful sound, usually it's at, at the expense of the performances of the bow. When I made this second bow for Inmo, he already won the Paganini competition. So knowing Inmo's style and poetry, I was thinking that the second bow would be more um, <coughs> mellow that would allow him to better express the um, melodic lines <coughs> because the technique you have it now I think it has this perfect balance between strength and flexibility uh, and I was able to execute a more precise expression with it that's why I really cherish having this book because it it kind of you know makes me a better musician it makes me think and uh, listen better. This is, for me, the test of all of what a bow can do at once. So in terms of rhythm, a dance that's in four is really hard to give you the feeling of lift and dance. So for example, here's an unweighted way of doing it. playing a synthesizer, that's what it would be. But it's a courtly dance, so people are bowing and moving, and so it's like there's an elegance to it that I need to put into this. In order to make that happen, I have to actually get the bow to give little tiny lifts, which means slightly more bow, maybe slightly more energy, slightly more pings on the second and fourth beat. This bow has to do things like speed of the bow would be tiny, tiny variations that it's all subconscious to you and it better be subconscious to me, right? So Benoit gives me the mental freedom to focus on actually the music, the space, the people. Uh, otherwise, I'm spending 95% of energy producing, executing, which is not performing. 
I'm thinking water, not notes. Innovation is quite important in my life. My goal is to create new tools for the musician to make their life easier. So I came up with this uh, carbon fiber bow and the spiccato bow. The spiccato bow is this bow that I invented with this uh, adjustment system and also this galleon frog. So I have many things in mind to explore new fields in bow making, to create a new hair for the bows. Also, I have uh, redesigned the uh, conducting baton, you know. Three years ago, a young conductor came to my studio and was asking me, I know you are not a baton maker, but you are knowledgeable in composite materials, so could you help? I first reached out to Benoit because he said he felt like the bow should disappear when you held it. So I said, I would love that if this were the case for the baton, I would love to forget that it's there. Benoit responded with words that I'll absolutely never forget, which is, I accept your challenge, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I love challenges. You know, the challenges uh, start from curiosity, and curiosity is a faculty that opens the minds. So, Kate is here. She developed the patent for this baton. Your ability to decide you're going to learn a whole new realm of synthetic materials and then master it and then make something completely beautiful and translate that into uh, that baton. I mean, it, it made us learn how to become better lawyers because we had to keep up his pace of innovation. So it was spectacular to be able to get above our normal comfort zone and play in an abstract realm and flex our muscles. I just want to say we're in the presence of a really great inventor and artist. It's very hard to put tradition and innovation in the same bucket. One becomes the other, but they often don't sit comfortably. The fact that he has this incredible body of knowledge that's actually not static. It's something that's living that needs to go on. And I think there's a treasure in him that needs to get out so that it can become more and more of a reality.